Hey guys, Alta Wisdom speaking. Today, I'm going to spend a bit of time going through my uh, latest uh, device, the name Autoplay. So, basically, what do we have here? I have one instance of Badzilla, that's the FM synth from UE that I use quite much. Um, let's open it up and just to bring up a uh, simple sound like FM sound. So, this is a basic one. Classical so let's modulate it. Phase modulation there from second oscillator. We may tune it a little later to get now okay we get on the same on the same track as the Brazil we have the autoplay ready, ready for use of default parameters. Okay, let's activate it. So let's go just through the interface a bit. Um, on top, top left, we have the time allocation. Um, basically, it's uh, telling the autoplay how much time it should spend uh, playing uh, each of these note divisions. Above that, you see the multiplying factor allowing to slow down by a given factor the whole time allocation module. So here, for example, uh, the uh, autoplay will spend a zero on 30 seconds uh, and then we'll, ha we'll give the same weight and the same chances to both 16th, 18th and 14th and 4th to play. So it's, uh, keep in mind it's, it's time-based, so it's not a number not that will be equivalent, but the time spent playing 16th will be identical to the time play spent playing 8th and the same for force so let's let it as it is now activate the plugin then we have here the velocity processing uh, telling the the device um, how much uh, pr how much hard the the node should be should be pressed and uh, we have a random parameter to add to that minimum velocity and uh, up to 100 now so here if I'm if I'm going back to zero then it's always will play 40 uh, and velocity over 127, which is the max maximum value for velocity. If I put half of it and starting from, for example, 40, then it will go, it will go half the way up to 127. So basically something like 80 or something else, 87 maybe around, around that. And if I put 100, it's gonna go from 40 to 127. Next, uh, on the top left, we have the length processing. So here, it's simple. Uh, the note will just not play because it's, uh, the length of each note will be zero. And as soon as, as, as we increase this value, then we go up to the point as the notes will just uh, keep on one after the other with almost no interruption. I just removed just a slight bit of milliseconds inside this module to make sure that the notes will re-trigger and then they will overlap and same we have a randomization parameter so if I go from 50 and I ask for 50 of randomization then the length will be half of the base note up to 75% of the base note because it's half the way up to 100 next we have the transposition probably um, so some notes would be transposed not all the notes so for example if you have a bass line and you want you know the first note like the first uh, bass uh, to be repeated more than the rest of the notes then it will just uh, happen half of the time so half of the note at least will be the bass note and then we can ask for the basic amount of how much uh, how much transposition will occur so up to 48 semitones which is four octaves and finally we have the note probability uh, which basically for Cubase users, for example, would should represent the density level of the of the played note. So you not always want to, you don't you don't always want to have all the notes playing at the same time. So only not playing one after the other and filling up the whole uh, the whole the whole bars. So we can reduce that, or you can also modulate the, modulate it, automate it to have in some uh, notes coming slowly at the beginning and then uh, having something denser and then uh, fading out 
uh, when the when the time has come. So let's try it. First, what we need is a basic basic note playing. So we could we could have several notes, but we don't care how how rearranged. So let's say that's a D one. So great pre based basic notes. And uh, now, uh, if I just press play on this sequence. right now the transition is put at half and the transition max is at 48 48 semitones so we have some random notes playing so let's get a green from the full time being of this one and just play run randomly So it's very simple. What can we do? What can we do from now? Um, we may want to use this uh, sequence as it is. So let's just let's just uh, make it a little bit longer. So basically, say I want I want to have a, a sixteen bar sequence of that. Just simply, I could we just record it and do. The, Open a track, open an audio track, and do some resample. This was quite, it's quite classical. Can resample, and then I can record on this track. I can record what's going out of this one, so I get a wave file. There's a more simple version of that. So I just will uh, freeze this track. Then I have this clip which is frozen. I just copy it, Alt click to the next to the audio track and now uh, have something which is name freeze but which actually is an audio file so now if i unfreeze that stop it and just play this one i have the title for one second So I may now just use this sequence that it is. I'll chop it up and uh, use the best use the best part, and uh, and we good and we're basically good to go. I can do it as many times as I want. I will always have a different sequence because the random numbers will will, will be different. We can do something else uh, instead of doing this like that. We can uh, say, okay, now I have this I have this audio sequence, but uh, what's annoying me is how I would like to change. Bits. So I, for example, here have with 30 to 30 seconds notes. I wanted to get rid of them, so I could I could do that and remove them and just uh, just manually chop everything. But uh, I tend personally to to think that uh, it's easier to work in the MIDI in the MIDI uh, in MIDI instead of uh, doing it in the, in the uh, audio in the audio environment. So let's add a MIDI track. So we have a MIDI track. Um, I have this return, which is wrong keyboard. Okay. So if I take my autoplay and instead I put it on the MIDI track, I just move it there. So I have exact same settings which have been copied. Let's get rid of 30 seconds. So it's a bit useless here with the the sequence. And now what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna ask this MIDI to send out the messages to my basil, uh, basil track. So anything which goes out of this will go go there. I need to put also the, the sequence there. Press play on this one and record on this one. And now we will basically get the contents of what is outputted by the autoplay inside this arm track.
So we see exactly what I was telling a little bit earlier. So we have the variation of the notes, uh, variation of the note lengths, variation here of the velocities. So what what ha I have done done here is uh, add the variation on the on the, on the pitch themselves. So let's maybe stop this one and then change a bit of parameters here. Um, I'm gonna add. Uh, I'm gonna activate the transpose here. Say that uh, one note over two notes of the third will be transposed up to 24 semitones, which is two octaves. And uh, I'm gonna put a scale here because I don't want the note going uh, out of reason. So let's say that I'm uh, I'm E E I'm E. Uh, the, the base note is E. So I'm gonna scale starting from E from uh, from D. Sorry. And say I want to do a frisian like frisian scale. Okay, and so all these are the notes of the frisian scale starting in in D. I can add a bit of of weight on some of the notes. Say I want a, a bit more of the uh, second note of the of the bar, of the scale. Actually, I don't care about where I put this as soon as as long as I have the right notes because the random transposition will make all the notes going anywhere here. So we have equal chances of having any of these horizontal notes, and uh, they will be mapped to the vertical note. So if I just press play. Telling us which notes have actually been played. So let's record again. Okay, now I have a full sequence which is in the proper scale with the proper proper durations may experience some, from time to time some overlap overlapping notes which is something that can be easily corrected in the MIDI domain so it's easier and say that okay let's let's listen to this one I can change this one so I'll say I want to I want I don't want this note okay and I have now what I have is a full MIDI sequence which have been which has been randomly generated and I that I can modify I can change the velocities I can change the notes I can um, remove some notes if needed and I don't need to do that in the audio domain so it's pretty much it's much more simpler and uh, much more versatile so here is the what I personally advise you to to do as much as possible even though using directly the, the audio sequence may, may may get you to you know uh, have something being being lucky and getting you know chances but uh, sometimes you want to have control over the, your randomness and you want to change something and when it's the audio domain it's uh, harder to do basically if you want to pitch do some pitch changing it will be quite hard here uh, even though we could just chop out the notes and put some notes around and move them around all around so there we go this is this is auto play so feel free to uh, comment out in the in the bottom and uh, any suggestion or comment uh, is more than welcome thank you for your time thank you for your attention uh, enjoy the holidays for those of you who had some who have some